What's up guys, the April Patreon rewards are now available. Armageddon, Teferi Time Reveler, and Nekusar the Mind Razor are all available through the end of the month. If you'd like to support our channel and pick up these sweet proxies, you can do so at patreon.com slash itresolves or clicking the link in the description below. What is going on everybody? Welcome to another gameplay video. Today we are going to be testing out Rakdos Sacrifice. So uh, this is a deck we've actually seen a lot in other videos. Uh, it's a very popular one right now and it got a lot of new uh, kind of buffs from Akoria. So we thought now would be a good time to test it out. Uh, a few of these cards are a little bit of a flex slot. Uh, I know I've seen a few lists running around with different kind of uh, tech and things like that. Uh, but this is the version I've come up with. This is uh, partly inspired by a number of deck lists that I have seen and uh, kind of just my own thoughts on the deck. Uh, obviously, as you can see, very, very cheap. We have got a three. Uh, three is our top of the curve, uh, which is pretty insane. Uh, because of that, we are running, I believe it's, uh, well, let's see, four... 8, uh, 10, 18, 19, 20, 20, 22 lands, not 24. Uh, we did cut it down by 2. I know a lot of lists were running 23, but uh, I, I think we can get by with 22. So uh, to go over the deck, we do have the Cauldron Familiar Witches Oven Combo here. Uh, just a great way to uh, continuously ping your opponent, gain a little bit of life, uh, and keep the damage train going. Not only that, but Witches Oven in this deck is like great uh, because... You kind of want the stuff to go to the graveyard anyway, uh, and so this is this is just a really efficient sacrifice outlet. Uh, Serrated Scorpion, another one drop here. It's a 1-2 uh, this time, so it does block things like Fervent, uh, Champion, things like that. Uh, when it dies, it deals 2 damage to each opponent, and you gain 2 life. So this is one of those that we repeatedly kind of want to be able to kill, bring back, kill, bring back. Uh, Whisper Squad. Uh, a really cool new card from Akoria. It's a 1-1 one, one for 1, not very exciting, but for 2 mana, uh, you get to find one from your deck and put it onto the battlefield tapped, uh, which is pretty awesome. Not only does this keep you moving forward with creature count uh, to get to things like, you know, Priest of the Forgotten Gods or something like that, uh, but it also just thins your deck, which is really, really nice uh, and gives you an onboard way to get creatures when maybe you don't have any in your hand. Uh, to claim the firstborn, this is one of those cards that I'm kind of testing out. I've seen a few lists with them, a few lists without them. Uh, I do think, you know, this is a fast deck, so having that three mana cost or less clause is not the worst thing in the world. Uh, I, I don't think it's terrible, and for only one mana, it just means you can probably play, you know, a priest with claim or, you know, something along those lines. Uh, and then do some really cool stuff with that. Gives you a great way, uh, or a great creature to sacrifice to Witch's Oven or Priest. Uh, Priest of the Forgotten Gods is a very key card in this deck. It gives you a way to sacrifice not only two creatures, uh, but also uh, make an opponent lose two life. They have to sacrifice a creature, and then you also get two mana out of the deal, as well as a card draw. Uh, so there is a lot to this card. This is very much an engine for this deck. Very, very key card. You'll see this card often get countered or destroyed pretty quickly, uh, because this one really, really is the backbone of this deck. Uh, Dreadhorde Butcher. Uh, I love this card. Um, I know some lists don't run it, but I do think in this list it makes a lot of sense. One, it's just a very aggressive card. It has haste, it comes down, starts swinging, but anytime it dies, it deals however many counters are on it, it deals that much damage to any target. That can be a creature, that can be a player. Uh, obviously, the idea is to keep this on the field as long as possible, then be able to sacrifice it to Witch's Oven or Priest. Um, a lot of times, though, you'll find yourself in a position where they might, uh, in, in one game that I was testing, they played Brazen Borrower to bounce this. I just used Witch's Oven to sacrifice it. It had uh, three power, so it essentially dealt three damage to the opponent and fizzled the Brazen Borrower, so they no longer had that option. Uh, so very good combo there. Uh, Croxa. Obvious include, really. Uh, it's a great way to, you know, get something out, sacrifice it immediately, obviously. Uh, but they discard a card and hopefully lose a little bit of life in the process. Uh, it's also very, very nice in tandem with something like uh, Bastion of Remembrance, where anytime a creature is uh, killed on your side of the field, you drain a life, uh, which is really, really good. You you play this out, and then you play Croxa and drain a life. So, very, very good. Heartless Act. Just a two mana removal spell in this stack, essentially. Uh, destroy target creature with no counters on it, or remove up to three counters from target creature. Most often, we're just going to be destroying a creature with this, uh, but that's great. I mean, two mana instant speed, I'm all in for that. Uh, this is another one where some decks run it, some decks don't. Uh, Bastion of Remembrance, we've already talked about a little bit. Three mana enchantment creates a 1-1 white human uh, soldier creature token. 
Uh, so it does give us a creature that we can sacrifice or attack with or do whatever we need to. And then, of course, when any creature dies, uh, you drain one life, which is fantastic for this deck. So absolutely love that. And then another kind of backbone card is Call of the Death Dweller. Uh, essentially, you return two creature cards with total converted mana cost three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. Uh, you put a death touch counter on either of them, then put a menace counter on either of them. So you kind of get to pick. Uh, this is amazing in this deck. Obviously, all of our creatures are either one or two mana. Uh, being able to pull back a Croxa along with, you know, a Serrated Scorpion, fantastic with this. So this card is very, very strong uh, in this deck. We do have two Castle Lock, Thwain, Lock Thwain, excuse me, 8-6 split on the mountains. We are heavier in black. Uh, four Blood Crypt, and then two Fabled Passage. Did not want to run the full four. We're not looking to play any tapped lands. We really, really want to make sure that we are uh, on curve with this deck. So we're going to give this a shot. We're going to do our three games and then hopefully do uh, a second video with this one as well. Uh, I did test this out just a bit, not a lot, uh, but just enough to kind of get the feel for the deck. I absolutely love it. It's sweet. Uh, I've not played much with the sacrifice style decks, uh, but it's really, really fun to be able to at least give it a shot this time around. So very excited to see how we do. Uh, and let's see this is actually a fine keep again we're maxing out at three so two lands in the opener is not bad we can get uh one of these two cards out first uh probably the scorpion because turn two i think we're looking to do the butcher here maybe that changes with serrated yeah okay no i think we're on the same game plan there okay let's get that out let's get that out Already we're seeing that's fine uh, because, you know, obviously we're going to be able to now swing in with the Dreadhorde Butcher and we've got the Call of the Death Dweller in our hand. So we've got ways to bring all these cards back, which is great. Uh, don't know how this matchup really plays out, to be honest. Ooh, that's quite good. Uh, I will say Lava Coil is very, very good against us. Uh, Acroxa, you say? Um, let's do this. Make him discard a card here. Unchained Berserker. Weird that they main deck that. Uh, maybe they lost to Mono White a little too often. Uh, that's interesting. Uh, we'd really like a land. Unfortunately, we're not getting there with the land. So we play this out. Um, I will say in testing, I didn't have too many trouble with the 22 lands. Um, unfortunately, we have drawn every Call of the Death Dweller, which is really not the card you want uh, right away. But, you know, it's okay. Um, this is a very, you know, interesting matchup as well. I'd be interested to see, given that we were drawing lands, I'd be interested to see how we actually fared against this for real. Um Five, six, seven, eight. I'm just gonna take this. That might be wrong, but. Ooh, not good, not good. Unfortunately, we're not getting there with this. If we had the land, I think we would have been a lot better off. But uh, as it stands, I think we are now just too far behind. Uh, this is a very quick matchup, though, so will not last long. Um, Don't worry. I brought company. Definitely going to block here. Yep. And that's game. Good game on their side. Uh, unfortunately, we just did not have the, uh, the lands we needed. All right, good game. That was a quick one, uh, as we saw. Uh, again, if we had had the land, I think we would have been okay, but um, as it stands, we obviously were not. Uh, so we'll go ahead and jump into game two. Uh, I do expect that this these matchups will go fairly quickly, uh, considering, you know, it's an aggro deck. Uh, essentially um, it can play the long game which is really really nice but it's definitely looking to you know win as quickly as possible of course as you know as these decks tend to do um, 
No creatures. We do have this, but no creatures. I'm going to mulligan that. This I will keep. Um... Mm. Yeah, I'm going to put this on the bottom. As we see here, we've got our three lands. We no longer really need any more lands, uh, which is, you know, nice, honestly. Uh, let's get the scorpion out there. <clears throat> it's just such a nice little, you know, turn one blocker. Or if they want to kill it, it's fine. It, it drains for two. Uh, perfect. More Dreadhorde Butchers. I like Dreadhorde Butcher, though. Um, could very easily run into a counter here. Okay. We have a very aggressive hand, so we'll see uh, how the opponent ends up playing this out. I think this might be an interesting matchup. The fairy. Okay. I kind of hope they just bounce this because we do get to swing in at the fairy next turn. Get a counter. Then we'll just go ahead and do this here. Uh, we will fetch for black uh, because, again, most of our deck is centered around black, not as much red. So let's get the double black, uh, really triple black up, and then we'll we'll be good in good shape, hopefully. And next turn we can do something like a Dreadhorde Butcher plus Scorpion or Croxa plus Scorpion or Croxa, you know, Cauldron Familiar. And depending on, you know, if we draw a land, we could do Croxa Deathward Butcher, which would be quite good, I would argue. Narset, huh? This is a very interesting card. Hmm. Cool card. Wow. Yeah. Uh, this is that Jeskai Godzilla deck. That's pretty cool. Um, we're gonna take Narset out. Okay, Witch's Oven combo is not bad. Um, let's do Croxa. Make him discard a card here, and then I'm gonna stick the Witch's Oven. Um, just so we know this will land. Uh, if this goes to the graveyard, it's not as big of a deal. If this does, it's a big deal. Um, so I think that's the correct play uh, for the time being. <clears throat> this is definitely going to be a longer matchup than the first one. Already is. Um, looks like they're just scrying and drawing a lot. Fully expect that they've got some sweepers in the board, which actually this deck is not the worst at dealing with sweepers, so that's kind of okay. I'm just gonna play stuff out now because it really doesn't matter too much. Um, counter up. Go ahead and do this now. And drain for one. All right, well, we do have the Witch's Oven combo out, uh, which is a very nice combo to have against a deck like this. Um, we also have some creatures in hand, so that does give us options for um, being able to, you know, even even if they sweep, they can we can still get another uh, food token to bring back the Cauldron Familiar and keep that going, uh, as long as they don't exile. Shatter this guy, sure. Makes sense. Um, hmm. I'm going to all attack here. They're going to shatter, which just means we can deal all that damage here. Hmm. This is going to mitigate the Brazen Barber, which I think is very important. I'm going to deal that two damage there just so they can't use it. And then that resolves and nothing happens. Um... So now they may kind of think twice about shattering. Um, I'm going to play the Serrated Scorpion out here. 
Uh, not going to play either of these two priests, uh, but we kind of are in a place where we want to fill our yard so we can get Croxa out. Um, so I'm not really upset if they want to sweep here. Not to mention, we do just, you know, we, we can pull stuff back, uh, or at least the Cauldron Familiar back. Godzilla, very, very good card, by the way. It's a fairy, huh? Bounce switches over, maybe? Or, uh... Okay. Hmm. I'm gonna actually do something a little bit different here. Uh, first of all... Let's attack and kill Teferi. We will meet again. Let's go ahead and activate this as well. Um, this is going to hopefully kind of entice them to sweep a little bit. Um, you know, we're, we're going to be able to start just bringing stuff out with these Whisper Squads. So if they sweep here, obviously they mitigate that issue. Um, perfect. But that also means that we... Um, get more things in our graveyard for Croxa. Uh, and we also get, you know, if we get a land here, if it's a red land, we actually get to play it. Okay, unfortunately we don't, that's okay. Uh, let's play Cauldron Familiar. Let's play Priest. Let's go ahead and just do this. Uh, drain for one. We got them below 10. That's not bad. <laughs> this is a heck of a deck. Uh, this Jeskai deck is very, very sweet uh, with new Narset as well as this Godzilla. I know I saw a few lists and like looking for decks to play. I saw a few that were running this. I think it's a very sweet card. Um, we also ran it in our Unpredictable Cyclone deck, though it uh, that deck was probably not at its best, we will say. Uh, but that's okay. Okay. We really, really are looking for, ah, what do we want? Like a call would be quite good. Okay, well, that's not bad. Two, three, four, five. Let's give it a shot, let's see what they do. Croxa, man, I love Croxa, such a sweet card. Okay, what do they discard? Elspeth Conqueror's Death, which makes me think they probably have another Elspeth Conqueror's Death, but uh, we actually kind of have to attack here. Such violence is upsetting. Uh, we don't have to, but it uh, allows us to draw a card off of the priest, which we are going to be looking to uh, activate. Um, I'm going to wait to activate this. If they do have something to target Croxa, like an Elspeth Conqueror's Death, we can use this in response. Um, and then that just gives, you know, it, it fizzle, it doesn't fizzle the spell, but it doesn't, uh, exile Croxa, which I think is pretty key. Oh, uh, let's do that. Any target players, each lose life and sacrifice a creature. Okay. And here... Can actually drain for a couple extra here. Because that dies again and then we have another food token. Uh, actually, let's cancel. Let's let this resolve. Let's do that at the end of the turn. Let me help you practice. That's a problem card, that Narset, for sure. You'll thank me later.
here we are very interested in killing this Narza. Um, Quiet, please. This is a very interesting matchup, guys. I will say that. Um, hmm. Hmm. Okay. Kind of surprised they didn't plus this first. Uh, just so they could use that mana instead, but sure. Then they would have had, I guess, one more open mana. May not have made that much difference. Just would have been a little more efficient. Two to the bottom. This Heartless Act doing very little, by the way. Um, <laughs> Let's play Priest. So we can do that. We lose the cat combo. I think that's kind of okay. Let's do this. Um, this is going to entice them to do a little bit more here, but I think we uh, we really have to do this. Get a card out of their hand. <sighs> we do have the Castle Lockswain, which will let us draw some cards here soon. Um, and the Heartless Act will come in handy against Godzilla. Uh, but unfortunately that's about it. So, oh, this is rough. Two on the bottom though. It's difficult to get them down these last six points. They're gonna. Okay. Let thoughts flow like river rapids. Discarded Elspeth Conquers Death. So it's gonna hit. Okay, I guess they just couldn't deal with the Croxa. Because otherwise there was no way we were, like, gonna win that, I don't think. Um, okay, cool. Well, go us. We got there. Yay. <laughs> uh, let's go to game three. Um, th that was a, a drawn-out game for sure, but it was a very, very fun one, and I don't think... Uh, arguably, that last play could have been a misplay, but I do think um, if they didn't have the, de the way to deal with the Croxa, that was the way to go, and... Um, Obviously, it kind of worked out there, so I'm fine with the way that worked out. Um, yeah, we'll keep this. It's a bit of a slow start. Like, it's a turn two uh, attacker, but we'll we'll see what we can do here. We also do have our three lands, and then Call is going to be able to bring back, you know, one of these two creatures if need be. We do have quite a lot of one drops as well, so... You know, as long as we get a one drop, we'll be able, at some point soon, we'll be able to get max value off of the call. Uh, really, really like call. That's a sweet card. Arboreal Grazer, huh? Sure. Let's do this. We won't attack. No sending a message here. What is this? Soul Thailand? Oh, Teamer. Okay. Gonna mutate on. Interesting, interesting. So team or mutate. Okay. 
drawing a butt ton of lands. Um, we can't claim this, right? No. Okay. I'm just making sure. Um, it's given me the option. That's why I was a little like, uh, can we? Um, we might draw a card here, but we're going to obviously wait till the end of their turn. Um, we've, we, we'd be taking quite a lot of damage. Uh, and so I don't just want to, you know, kind of willy nilly throw that away. Um, but we obviously do need to draw something pretty spectacular here, so we will see what we can do. Um, honestly, a uh, ooh, that's quite good. Yeah. Now, worth noting, this is something that we're going to be able to steal if we would like to. The land fights for us. Oh, okay. They're not going to attack with it. Fine by me. Maybe they are. I was gonna say it does have vigilance. They they can. They didn't. Okay. We'll do this now. We are taking quite a big hit here, but another claim, huh? Um. Kind of just want to double claim. <laughs> this weirdly does clear their board. <laughs> this is kind of silly. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, so. Uh, no use really in attacking, I suppose. Am I right? Well, there is. Uh, we can target any number of players. You. Sacrifice you and you. Could have tapped that for mana first, actually. That would have been smart. Uh, that way we could have gotten Crocs out. Whoops, whoops. All right, that was an interesting turn. That was a pretty sweet one. Uh, I did misplay. We could have gotten Croxa out as well, uh, which would have been much, much better because then we would have had a very good target for call. Uh, so we could have done a lot better. That was a misplay for sure. Um, here they're going to get obviously just butt tons of mana and do something really cool. And uh, it's going to be very difficult for us to deal with it. So that's how we're going. Yeah. Uh, that's good. That's very, very good. Probably just double Crocs a year. <laughs> I mean, why not, right? Oops. Uh, you. Yep. They didn't use their Nissa last turn. That's kind of interesting. I'm gonna do this. Does not really matter. Okay, well, we found a way to deal with their stuff, which is cool. Um, 
but this is still a huge problem. But I think we're right to just attack their life total here, uh, considering we've got the Croxes and everything like that. So I, like, I don't think we're doing anything too terribly wrong. This arguably could have been a better play than the call, uh, just because we would have gotten in more triggers off of it, obviously. So there's that. Um, but we'll we'll see. Um, not much I would have done differently, really. Here, the cool thing is we can attack with the Cauldron Familiar because they have Death Touch, or it has Death Touch, so this does kind of weirdly block fairly well. Getting the value off of discards on that is just so good. Okay, well, that's annoying. Sure. So they are down to a Brazen Borrower and a Nissa, and then what's on the field here? Bro, I'm super cool with this. Let's kill that land. Um. Yeah. I'm gonna do this. Now we have a very difficult to deal with way for us to win just by blocking. So like they can keep attacking in. Kinda cool with it because then we just get to, you know, now this is a bit of an issue, but again, that's kind of why we blocked last turn, so we didn't have quite, or we had a bit more of a life total to play with. Um, this also does gain us life, so there is that. Um, and no, I don't particularly care if their creature or their lands get indestructible. It's not good for us, but that's no longer our route to victory, I don't think. So, you know, it's fine. Think about it this way, we play Priest. This is like bottom of the barrel thing. We play Priest, sacrifice Priest in this to uh, deal to here. It also does two more. Ooh, Witch's Oven. Oh, hello. Okay, well, that kind of changes things. Um, hmm. Does just lots and lots of damage. Um, and here we just win, right? That's two damage and then two extra damage. So we just win. Cool. We got there. That was a little bit of a tough battle, I will say. But that was very, very fun, guys. Uh, Awesome. Awesome game. Really cool. Um, I'm enjoying this deck quite a bit. Uh, obviously, we didn't do super well in that first matchup. Uh, we handled our own in the second, though I don't necessarily think they... I, I don't think we had quite lost uh, when they had given up, but that's okay. Um, whoops. Uh, and then that last game, I think, it was very hard fought, but I think we got there. So, very, very happy, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, as always, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. Please make sure to subscribe as well if you're not already. I know we've uh, we've been looking at our analytics. A lot of you are not subscribed. If you would like to, we really do appreciate the support. Please make sure you do. Uh, and thank you again, seriously, so much for watching. I will see you guys very soon with hopefully part two of this Rakdos uh, sacrifice list. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you soon.